Let's pray, and, and then we'll read the scriptures. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share the word of the Lord. Father, I pray that our hearts be open to receive the word. Our minds would be clear to comprehend the word. And Father, I pray for a willpower to put the word into practice. Father, I pray for this church that you would increase it, multiply your grace and peace to it. Give us favor today, Father. Let me uh, minister like Jesus would today in the love of the Father and in the power of the Spirit. I pray for anyone that is sick that they'll be healed. I pray for anyone that lost they would be saved. Anyone that is bound by anything, Father, that they would be delivered today. Father, this is the day of salvation. The word sozo, this is the day that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Father. Bless us today with your presence. Amen the sermon. Amen everything that is said and done here today by sending your Holy Spirit and giving us your amen, Father. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you got, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. It's the story about two men. I'm going to need two men to help me preach today. Uh, but I need one around 33 years. You have them? Come on up here. Join me. How are you? How old are you? 34. How old are you? 41. You get to stand on this side. Okay, right here. Just look good. That's all you have to do. <laughs> you stand right over here. Come on, let's space it out a little bit. Right here. You look good. Hallelujah. The story is about two men. Let's read 1 through 20. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that as he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones." But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him, with much that he would not send them away out of the country. And there was uh, nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Demons cannot swim. Bible says in one place, they walk around in dry places. That's why out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And we flow rivers of living water. And the demons cannot swim. That's a different sermon, but I just felt like throwing it in. Amen. And they that, uh, well, um, and, and they, verse 15, and they come to Jesus, see that him that was possessed with the devil and had legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of the coast. And when he had come into the ship, he, had, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. 
Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish. The wild man had become a preacher now. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Amen. Give your neighbor another high five and be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I was torn between two sermons when I first found out I was coming. They said there was going to be two services. So I do a teaching on miracles. Uh, the body of Christ has done itself an injustice by raising up uh, people that we see as super anointed and, you know, glow in the dark and walk on water and that kind of thing. We make celebrities out of people that, 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 makes, uh, that, that has signs and wonders follow them. So I do a teaching on the miracle workers in the body of Christ. Gideon uh, asked the question, where are the miracles? And he became the miracle that his people needed. All right? And my teaching is that I, you can be a miracle worker in the body of Christ. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells on the inside of you. And you can be a miracle worker. It's not just for, I'm a bush boy, I'm a country boy that God has raised up. From, if you knew my beginning, you're going to hear some of my story today. This is why I'm teaching on this. This wild man, this, sorry, you're the legion today. This wild man becomes a preacher. This is my story. All right? This is your story. Whether you like it or not, uh, Jesus comes and he saves us, changes us, and he has a purpose for us. This is Jesus. Isn't G anybody in love with Jesus? I'm in love with Jesus. Sean, can I have a bottle of water, please? This is Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my mouth is dry. I guess I'm nervous. You people make me nervous. No, I don't want to do anything to hurt the testimony of Jesus today. Okay, this is Jesus. He's number one. No one has ever walked like this man or talked like this man. Romans 8, 29 says we are predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son. We are supposed to be like him. We're to show the world Jesus, right? That's our destiny. This is number 10. He's 1. He's 10. The scale is between 1 and 10. The Bible says examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Amen. Talk to me. I'm used to a church that talks to me. The Bible says, judge yourself and you won't have need of anyone to judge you. So if the scale is 1 to 10, no one in the Bible is described as bad as this man, full of demons. All right? He's 10. He's 1. This is the scale. Where are you? Examine yourself. Amen? I'm going to say be merciful to you today. I'm going to be merciful to you and say that you're number 5. The sermon title is, Get Off of Five. See, if our destiny is to be like Jesus, and some of you may be nine and a half, you might have some imps on your shoulders that needs to be cast off today. Can you understand my Georgia English? Yeah, I know it's a lot different than the South African English. I don't know what language you guys are speaking, but I'm a, Lord, give me the interpretation gift today. Some of us are nine, eight, seven. Like I said, I'm going to be merciful and fine. I want to be right here with Jesus because that's our destiny. But I've tried to walk on water three times and almost drowned each one. All right? But our destiny is to be like him. There's some things that Legion did to get him off of number 10. He became a preacher, a great change that took place. I wrote a book on this change agent. In my study for the book, I learned that this man, the Bible says, that he went throughout the capitalists proclaiming what the Lord had done for him. The Decapolis was a league of 10 cities uh, in modern-day Jordan and Syria. He went throughout the Decapolis, and he proclaimed the word. The early church used those churches in those 10 cities that, that a scholar believes that this man started. This wild man became an apostle, started proclaiming the word of the Lord throughout the Decapolis. The early church used those churches on their early missionary journeys. 
Everybody thank God for Legion this morning. Hallelujah. Thank God for the grace that can change your man. Amen. So at the end of the story, I'm jumping ahead. He becomes like Jesus and wants to go with Jesus. Jesus commissions him, and he goes to plant churches. But let's talk about him pre-deliverance because he did some thing pre-deliverance that got him off of number 10 that if you'll do these things, you'll get off of five. See, we get stuck on five, and we say, we're not like this man. At least we're not like this man. But the problem is we're not like this man. This is our destiny. This is our purpose. The psalmist said, I will not be satisfied until I awake with thy likeness. I'm not satisfied preaching. I told the pastors in the room earlier this morning, I'm in the last stages of my life. I, I hope it lasts for a long time. Amen. I plan on living to be 120. I'm in good health. My, my mother just turned 90. She's in good health. My grandmother lived to be 97. My father was 93. So I, I, I'm planning on being here a long time, but like it or not, I am, I'm, yesterday I was skinny and dark headed. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. But I want to leave it all on the field. I want to touch as many people as I can for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to fulfill my destiny. I want to be more like Jesus today than I was yesterday. I want to keep moving. And the Bible says if we'll keep looking to him, the Bible says we're changed from glory to glory to more glory and, and, and on. But there's some things that he did before he got delivered that will help us today if we will get off of number five, if we have a desire to get off of number five. Number one, the Bible says he cried out day and night. Let's talk about him first. So how, how, what do you think he looked like? This man's looking good today, but what do you think Legion looked like? What do you think he smelt like? Come on, come on, let your mind wonder about it today. How bad would the stench he lived among the tombs, among dead people. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly, life to the full. But sometimes we're in the tomb of the church singing dead song, praying dead prayers. And Jesus told the Pharisees, your mouth is like a sepulcher and ah, full of dead men bones. <laughs> What would we do if a legion come running at us? I was in Burma and I had a wild man come running to me. We was able to cast out the devil, praise God, amen. amen. I was in India, hallelujah. And they brought a 17 year old boy tied up with a rope. They led him to my meeting because he was wild. I hadn't spoken in four months. Woke up with a perfect normal teenage boy his mother said to me, until four months earlier, they found him in a trance. Something took over him. And so they let him. He would jump on his mother and father and beat, him, beat them. He was a wild man. And they brought him to my meeting. And praise God, the end of the meeting, he told his mother how much he loved her. And uh, I'll never forget that. Number one, he cried out to the Lord day and night. He cried out day and night. That's a good place to start. Crying out to God. Crying out to God will get you off of number five. When God showed himself to Moses in the burning bush, he came to God. He came to Moses and said, I've heard the cry of my people who was enslaved. I heard the cries of my people. I saw their affliction and I have come down to deliver them. Why did Jesus come to this island? He crossed a sea, crossed a storm for this one man. Nobody else got touched by Jesus. This one man was the only one that got the deliverance. Jesus went away. They were afraid of Jesus. But this man was crying out day and night. The psalmist said, this poor man cried unto the Lord, and he heard my cry, and he has delivered me. Hallelujah. I believe there's some people in Joburg this morning that's been crying out to God. They've been crying out to God, and God wants to send Jesus to deliver them. But listen, you are the ambassadors of heaven. You are the representatives of Jesus Christ. You represent him to the world. We can't hide in our walls of the church. If we want to represent him, we've got to get to the place where we can be seen. 
He cried out to the Lord. Good place to start. He saw the Lord. Number two, the Bible says that we're to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Can you see Jesus in your neighbor? Can you see Jesus in the one sitting beside you this morning? Christ in you is the hope of glory. If we want to see the glory of God, if we want to see the power of God, if we want to see the manifestations of God, the signs and wonders of God, we got to quit gazing up into heaven. The same Jesus that's ascended from you, we still think that he's ascended somewhere. He came down in the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, and he will never leave us, never forsake us. He's right here with us today. We got to see Jesus, and as his representative, we got to be Jesus to the world. He cried out. He saw Jesus. We got to see Jesus. Number two. Number three, because my time is short, and I want to pray for some of you. The Bible says he ran to Jesus. Come on, run over here with me, lead you. Lead your stench back there. <laughs> he ran to Jesus. All right, he ran to Jesus. We're on five. We're satisfied with five. We're stuck on five. We don't want to get off of five. We better start crying out to Jesus. We got to see Jesus, and we got to run to Jesus. Jesus has been good to you. You're on the right side of the grass. You need to see that. The Bible says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are pure, whatsoever things of a good report, think on these things. Amen. And be grateful like the pastor told us at the offering time. Be grateful to God. See Jesus. Think about Jesus. Our heart, our minds, everything. We need to be consumed with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says he ran to Jesus. Not one demon could stop him. Not one demon could stop him. See, God gave man dominion on the earth. Man has dominion on earth. I don't care how bad he is. I don't care how many demons he has. I don't care how, how full of the devil he is. The demons cannot stop this man from running to Jesus when Jesus shows himself to him. Hallelujah. He introduced me and he named some accolades. Let me tell you the real me. I was a bush boy, farm boy, country boy, poor. And I know everybody thinks everybody in America was rich. We were so poor we couldn't pay attention. I, 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 and not only were we so poor, we, we was confused also. Four years old, I accept Jesus as my Lord. Four years old, my sister was 12, older sister, eight years older than me. She was being baptized on a pond down in the countryside of southeast Georgia. The Holy Spirit came upon me, and I began to speak with tongues, is what the, 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 the uh, elder says. And I was trying to get out to the preacher, and some of the adults thought I was just a kid playing, and they were trying to stop me, but that preacher had enough anointing in him to say, let that little boy come to me. And he held me up out of the water and baptized me that day, four years old, seven years old. Fast forward, a cousin moves in, an older cousin from South Florida moves in with us. And uh, he molests me for three years, held a knife to me and my brother and told me he was going to kill my mother if I said anything to him. Four years old, I would say, don't remember life before that. My earliest childhood memories is the Holy Spirit coming on me. Seven years old, I get abused. Eight years, nine years, abused. Thirteen years old, I'm drinking, trying to hide, cover the pain that I had inside of me. I wasn't planning on going here, but I want you to understand where I'm at. All right? 13 years old, I start chasing every girl in a skirt just to prove I'm a man. Wow, girls, girls, girls. I get hooked on girls. Girls are good. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So now you're hooked on this. You're hooked on this. And you're hooked on all kind of things. And you know that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus keeps coming. Jesus, God's a stalker. He keeps, he keeps coming. No matter where you go, he just keeps coming. No matter what's going on. I was in a club in Germany when I was young and in the army drinking drunk. And I was in a club getting down with my bad self on the dance floor. Amen. With some young Fraulein. And 
and the Holy Ghost comes into the club and the music was loud, but the Holy Ghost was louder. And he said, Dale, you don't belong here. Immediately I sobered up, went back to the barracks. That day, the, my mother sent me a Bible. One verse highlighted in the Bible with a note. The verse was, there is no temptation taking you but such that is common to man. But God is faithful. I'll never forget that. Who opened up a door for temptation. Amen. I'm going to get back on Legion. I don't know why I went, I went there. I want you to understand where I came from. I was the man with condemnation on him. Guilt. Shame. Dirtiness. An unclean spirit. In my mind, I was being tormented day and night because God called me to preach at four years old. And that the, I felt so far away from God. I felt so far away from God. He kept coming. He kept coming. He kept coming. Dale, I got need of you. I got purpose for you. Amen. And finally, one day, I ran to Jesus. One day, my oldest son, who's 35 years old, was born premature, heart prop, heart holes in his heart, lungs wasn't developed. And that day, as many times before, I promised the Lord I would preach one day. That day, I said, Lord, if you'll heal him, I will preach the gospel. And I've been preaching ever since because God healed him immediately. <laughs> Amen. So anyway, he worshiped Jesus. Pre-deliverance. Don't ever let your problem stop you from worshiping God. Don't ever let any demon, I don't care what you did last night. I don't care what you've done the week before. I don't care what kind of problems you've had. You worship the Lord. There, there's, there's power when we worship God. When a prostitute came to Jesus and she washed his feet, the Pharisee said if he knew what type of woman that was, uh, he wouldn't allow her to touch him. But she was worshiping the Lord. Jesus never refused worship. He never refused worship. He didn't care who it came from. He always received the worship. He inhabits the praises of his people. And so we need to worship the Lord with everything. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Let everything. Everybody inhale for me this morning. Exhale. The Bible says let everything that had breath Praise the Lord. And then it gets specific. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. When you get saved, it's you and God. It's nobody else. When you die, it's you and God. Nobody else. So praise the Lord while you've got breath in your body. He worshiped the Lord pre-deliverance. Hallelujah. Jesus calmed the man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came back and found the man in his right mind. Some people, in my study of my book, I found out that some th scholars think this is the prodigal son. There are some similarities. The prodigal son came to himself. There, pig, there were pigs in the, both stories. Amen? And, and the prodigal son went home, and Jesus told this man to go home. So there, it could be the prodigal son. But he came to himself. Jesus calmed the man. He clothed the man. He was sitting clothed. God has given us a garment of praise. He's given us the best robe. The prodigal son came home in rags, but the father said, put on the best robe. Go into my bed chamber. Get out the best. The best robe belonged to the father. The father's robe. Get the best robe and bring it on and put it upon my son. My son who was dead is alive now. Glory to God. So he calmed the man. He clothed the man. Uh, he cleansed the man. The wild man became a preacher man. Glory to God. He cleansed the man. And listen, he commissioned the man. He commissioned the man. Y'all can sit down. Give, my, give a hand to uh, Jesus and the wild man. Hallelujah. When I'm at 35 minutes, would somebody just say something, stand up? Because I want to be, I'm submissive to the house. I, wherever I go, I'm submissive to the, okay. Already? Okay, good. Hasn't Jesus commissioned you? He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. He told the wild man, go tell your family. Go tell your neighbors. The wild man was faithful. In August, I'm going to the Philippines. 
September Costa Rica. I've preached the gospel many times in, in some of these countries, many, India 10 times, whatever. Uh, we have 13 churches in Thailand, Cambodia, uh, Philippines. We just planted a church. I'm going to dedicate it. And, and uh, you know, God is good. God is good. If I'm faithful or if not, God is good. But he blesses faithfulness. Now, I want God to bless you. I want you to, the, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come, I am come that you might have life. I don't like that word might. I don't like it. Might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. If you might have it, that means you might not have it. Right? The Bible says we're co-laborers together with God. Co-laborers together with God. God's spirit is always pulling at our heartstrings. I said, God's a stalker. He would not let me go. He just kept pulling, kept pulling, kept pulling. I, I shielded it off for so long. I shielded it off. I, I, I pushed him away. I, I did everything I could. I did not want to be a preacher of the gospel. I, when I was in high school, because of the shame that was on me and because I had a speech problem, stuttering problem, and, and there's still a lot of English words I cannot say. Amen. I just learned other words. But, but, but uh, I didn't want, I'd take an F in school to keep from getting up in front of a class. I would sweet talk the teacher into let me do it another way. And it's a, somebody said, are oh, you an honor graduate? It was an honor that I graduated. <laughs> Amen. But God kept calling. He kept pulling. I believe he's pulling at your heartstrings today. And I, I believe that God is always, the Bible says if we would draw near to God, he would draw near to us. The Bible says if I come to him, if I seek after him, I will surely find him. He's not far from any one of us. You're not as far away as you think. One step of faith and the Holy Spirit can come into you and fill you and change you and, and, and make you a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody can be changed. If wild man, legion can be changed, if I can be changed, you can be changed. And I'm talking about a good change. Everybody is afraid of change. We flee change. We fight change. But we need to flow with the change because God's got some glory. He, you haven't seen, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the hearts of man what God has in store for those that love him. Hallelujah. God has some good things for you. You haven't tasted yet all the things that God wants to do for you. Maybe just a seed here or seed there. Let that seed germinate and come up a bountiful harvest. The reason I didn't want to be a preacher, I knew one day I'd be preaching in Africa. I knew I'd go to India. I didn't want to go to India. I didn't want to go to Africa. Now I want to go. Now I get to go. It's not that I have to go. I get to go. I meet beautiful people everywhere I go that that's falling in love with Jesus. I was just in Rwanda. I came here from Rwanda. What a miracle Rwanda is. The genocide that happened not so long ago, 90. Now the Hutus, there's only Rwandan. Amen. Ah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, sister. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I'm trying to hurry and get through. I'm only here one time. I'll have to give you a shot. We say, in America, everybody has guns, you know. We shotgun blast you. <laughs> a rifle with pinpoint. When I, when I move into the prophetic, I want to be pinpoint rifle and get. But uh, preaching to all of you, I just want to. <laughs> blast you. Get, get a seed in there. Get a seed in there. That seed will come forth. I just want to plant seeds. The older I get, I just want to plant seeds. Plant seeds. God's got a purpose for you. God's got a plan for you. God's got reason for you being here today to hear this crazy American preach. God's got a purpose for me being crazy. I'm crazy, but I know what I'm crazy about. It's Jesus. I'm a nut, but I'm screwed on the right boat. I have the joy of the Lord in me. For many years of my early life that I even forget, now, I don't know why the Holy Spirit brought it up today. Really, I, I, don't, I don't like bringing it up. That, that man's dead. 
But I remember how bitter that man was, angry that man. You can't see this you got to see this by faith but i was athletic as a kid I, I boxed and because i was angry i was a good boxer and i played basketball i could run all day i know you got to see that by faith but i was i could i could run all day i was a good athlete and uh, i became a comic to take away some of the pain try to laugh god has took it away and gave me joy. It's not a fake smile now. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I had so much hatred in me. My cousin that molested me, I won to the Lord later on, years later. <laughs> Amen. Back in my wild days, I hid behind his house, wanting him to come home with a gun. I was going to kill him. That's the man preaching to you today. That's the man preaching to you today. But the Holy Spirit changed me. God never gave up on me. And I want to tell you, God has never given up on you. I don't know what your story is, but I know Jesus is a healer. I know him as a deliverer. I know him as a savior. He's my Lord. He's my King. And I bow my knee to him. And it, we sung a song about every man will bow to him. Why not today? Why not today submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Amen. And your life will be better tomorrow if you submit. And I'm talking to Christians. You know, I got saved 30 years ago. What have you done since then? Come on now. David said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. In other words, that anointing he received from Samuel had grown stale. That anointing that he had received, had, he, said, he said, I need a fresh anointing to empower me to do what God has called me to do. 